Hi Grade 7, welcome to your first video lecture. This is a video to help prepare you for measurement part A lab that we're going to be doing in class next. So uh, I'm going to introduce the materials, I'm going to do a few explanations about the content of the lab, and um, hopefully you will be ready to perform the procedure and answer all the questions when you come to class. Okay, so the materials that you'll be using are all materials that are used to measure volume. Volume is the amount of space that something takes up, whether it's a liquid, a solid, or a gas. So we're going to be dealing with uh, liquids in this lab, particularly water. We're just going to use water, tap water. We don't have to worry about it being distilled or, or any particular special kind of water. We're just going to use tap water. All right, so the tools, materials that you will be using, of course, is the tap water. You will have a medium beaker like this and a larger beaker like this. This is a 500 milliliter beaker and uh, this one is a 250 so it's uh, half the size. All right. And you will also be using graduated cylinders. You'll use a bigger one like this. Uh, this one is 100 milliliters. This one is 50 milliliters. Uh, you'll also be using uh, pipettes. Now there are two types of pipettes, and we're going to have you using uh, this one. This is a glass pipette, and it's actually pretty difficult to use. But the reason um, we often like to use this type is because it actually tells you how much it holds. This is a 10 milliliter pipette, and there's a little blue line here that actually shows you where 10 milliliters is. The other thing is, is if you don't have a, a bulb at the end to bring water in, what you have to do is this. And you want to make sure that you don't suck the water up into your mouth. <laughs> it won't hurt you because it is just water, but um, we would prefer that you not do that. The tricky part then, you see how I have my finger over the open end of the tube, and that's what's keeping it in there. Just like when you have a straw in your drink, and you put it down, you put your finger on the top, and then you bring it up to your mouth and drink out of the straw, right? Well, this pipette works kind of on the same principle. But if I want to have 10 milliliters of fluid in my pipette, I've got to release enough of the water to get down to the little blue line. And that's where it gets tricky. So you guys are going to have to practice. It's going to be pretty hard, but you have to just let your finger off a little bit. I'm pretty good at it. And stop. And if you notice, I've got the water to the blue line now. Okay? And then you have to let drops out very easily, too. One, two, three, four, five. So if you take your finger off too far, it'll be a stream of water that comes out like that and you won't be able to count the drops. Not good. Okay, So you'll get some practice working with this type of pipette. Now there is another type of pipette that we often use, these little plastic ones. The thing is with these is they're not always accurate in what they measure, but they're much easier to use than the other glass pipette. So there will be some things that you have to use the glass pipette with and some things that you can just use the little plastic one. Okay, let's go into the question. Uh, if you notice here on the screen, uh, there are certain questions that you need to be thinking about uh, before you come. You, um, you don't necessarily have to answer it, but it would probably be a good idea if you could at least think about what the answer might be. And we'll talk about this in class as well. All right, the first question is, what amount of liquid is in the graduated cylinder on the teacher's desk? So myself and Mr. Johnson are each going to have a graduated cylinder, and we will have a certain amount of water in it, and you will need to be able to read what the volume is of that water. Now, um, the second question is important because the meniscus determines how you measure the amount of volume. The meniscus is the curve that a liquid makes when it's in a container like this, in a beaker or a graduated cylinder or even a cup. And because of surface tension in the water, the, the water forms a concave curve. In other words, it, it sinks down. So the water is almost climbing up the sides of the graduated cylinder, the beaker. 
that curve is called the meniscus. And when you measure the volume of a liquid that has a meniscus, you measure the center. So in the case of water, because it's concave, the center of the meniscus is at the lowest point, the bottom of the curve. So that's where you want to measure, not, not the top line where the water comes on the sides. And if you look on, Moodle, on my Moodle page, um, there is a picture of some liquid in a graduated cylinder, and I ask uh, how much, what the volume is. So we'll probably look at that before we get started uh, on the lab, just to make sure you understand meniscus. Okay, how much liquid can your graduated cylinder measure? Not how much liquid can it hold, but how much can it measure? So in this case, this one is 100, and this one is 50. It can't measure more than 50 milliliters. Okay, uh, how much can your beaker measure? How many milliliters does the pipette hold? I uh, showed you that earlier. That's going to be 10 milliliters in this case. Um, you could you could measure this one. You have to do, and each one may be different because they're plastic, so they don't hold their shape and they shrink and, and expand. So what you might do is fill this up as much as possible and then put it into a graduated cylinder to measure. But we know that the glass pipettes hold 10 milliliters if you measure to the line. Okay? And then you're going, it says measure 25 milliliters in a graduated cylinder, in a medium, and in a large beaker. And the question is, which is the most accurate? The ac accurate means which is the closest to the actual amount of liquid. Okay. All right. So let's move on. So when you come into class, this is the procedure that you're going to follow. First of all, you're going to fill the pipette with 10 milliliters of water. And you're going to slowly drip it out. And we'll help you with that. And count the drops. Uh, and figure out how many drops there are in 10 milliliters of water. So you're probably going to want to use um, a graduated cylinder like this or a smaller one that measures 10 milliliters so you can count the drops. Okay. Uh, then two, you're going to fill the graduated cylinder with 10 milliliters of water and then using the pipette you're going to add uh, drops of water and then in this case you can use a little plastic one. You're going to add the drops of water into the same graduated cylinder until the volume reaches 20 milliliters. Now here's the key. You got to count the drops as you're putting them in. You can't lose count. If you lose count or you forget, you got to start all over. Okay? And you're going to do that three times and then you're going to record the results for each trial in the chart here that's on the paper. Okay? And then you're going to calculate the average number of drops in 10 milliliters of water. Okay, uh, and then you're going to fill another graduated cylinder with, with 50 milliliters of water. Um, and using a small graduate, you're going to measure 10. So we've got some smaller ones in the cabinet that you can use. And you're going to add that 10 milliliters to the 50 milliliters. So you're probably going to have to use this one, right? Because this one only measures to 50. And if you add some, it's going to be 60. Okay. So you're going to add the 10 milliliters that you measured in the small one into the 50. And what's the new volume measurement in this one? Okay, so we're trying to see how accurate um, our graduates are. Sometimes these are called graduates, sometimes they're called graduated cylinders. Okay, and then another thing you're going to do is you're going to compare the volume of 30 milliliters of water with the formula for the volume of cil cylinder, which is the area of the base times the height. The area of the base times the height. So here's the area of the base, right? or here's the base, so you have to calculate the area of that times the height. So you've got to measure how far up um, on this graduate 30 milliliters is. So you're going to have to measure the length from here to here. That's your height. So you've got area of the base times the height. So that's uh, figuring it out using uh, basically linear measurements. And then um, you're going to compare that. You're going to compare that to um, the volume that the graduate said it was. So is it is it actually 30 milliliters? And uh, one thing that you really need to know uh, at this point, and I'm going to go ahead and type it in here, is that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. Let me do this format. You see this little superscript here? So then I'm going to type in a 
3 because volume is cubic and that means that it's to the third, right? So area is squared, so it's always to the power of 2, but volume is cubic, so it always has to be a 3. So you're going to be using centimeters to figure out the area of the base, and you're going to use centimeters to measure the height up to 30 milliliters on the graduated cylinder, and then you're going to figure out what the, um, the volume is in cubic centimeters. And this is easy because, like I said, one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. So if it's, tw if it's 30 milliliters, then when you do the measurements, it should be 30 cubic centimeters as well. Okay, so that's a nice tip for you when you're doing your labs. And then um, you and your partners are going to have to go through and answer these questions and draw conclusions. So as you're doing the procedure, if you need help, please ask myself or Mr. Johnston. We would be happy to help you and explain anything that you don't quite get. Uh, please try to be precise uh, with your measuring. Don't rush through it. You've got plenty of time. You've got the whole block. And um, we want you to practice good safety skills. So even though we're just using water, please be careful and uh, don't, um, these are very fragile, very, very fragile. So please don't leave them on the desk where they will roll off and fall on the floor and don't drop them on the floor. Um, all of the materials will be uh, over in the cabinets in our rooms and we would, uh, you know, you're welcome to go and get what you need and we'll try to have everything available for you when we do the lab, okay? So I hope this was helpful and be sure that you are ready to do the procedure and learn about measuring volume when you come to next class. All right, thank you.